Welcome everyone. This is our gentle restorative class for this week. It's gonna be just shy of um, an hour because we have someone coming over to the house to record at noon, but we're just gonna get right into the practice. I'm gonna keep this gentle movement and restorative. We may be a little closer to the ground today. I hope that sounds good to you. Um, I suggest two blocks, bolster, blanket if you need it, you know, to uh, create some grounding in the body, some covering to keep some heat um, in while we're relaxing or even um, underneath the head for a pillow. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna grab my blocks. We're gonna start in a sitting position today. So feel free to find a block or bolster to provide a little platform for you. Uh, where you're sitting and you're getting that neutral pelvis, slight tilt forward and the knees kind of angle down towards the floor. We'll go ahead and have the palms resting down for a symbol of being grounded. We'll lift up through the crown of the head and close the lids of the eyes. And just take a moment to notice what you're coming to the mat with today. Are things spilling over from yesterday? Were you able to get a good night's sleep? Have you had a fairly active or productive morning? Or maybe just noticing what is fluttering around in your mind. And then let's join the palms together and feel when they unite, how it seals the energy in. Allow your thumbs to press into the upper part of your breastbone. and become more engaged with your breath. So we're going to try to lay everything down through this hour so that we can be committed to our practice. And this practice is experiential as we move the body, as we breathe with the depth, and as we focus the mind. Your next inhalation, let's link the fingers together and as you exhale, push the palms out in front of you. Now just hold it here and then drop the shoulders from the ears and lift up through your breastbone again. Now lift the arms overhead, tracking them beside your ears, noticing whether or not this feels like a lot of effort or perhaps a struggle today. Anything that causes you to groan or to hold your breath, maybe do less. And so less here would be maybe angling the arms forward. So there's less stress in the shoulders. Of course, depending on the person and the day. Take another deep breath in. As you exhale, release your left hand down and curve over to that side. Take your hand and cup a hold of the back side of your head and then gently add in. It's gonna feel a little bit like a twist through your upper back as we start to dial the heart skyward. Now you can turn your drishti that direction as well. Or you can close your eyes if you don't want the eye yoga. And then inhale, release that hand, stretch out through that arm, build yourself back up and 
relax the hands. Let's bring the hands back to the heart center. Lace the fingers up again. Exhale, extend your palms out in front. So you're reaching equally through your fingers, palm, and wrist. So it's not like trying to pop the knuckles. And then drop the shoulders from your ears. Lift through your heart center. Allow the arms to come back overhead. Maybe you have a little bit more freedom than you didn't have before. Perhaps doing it once already made it less restrictive. Maybe the breath is the only thing that's freed up. Just observe. And then as you exhale, let's go ahead and lower the right hand down, turning the left palm to face the floor as the arm stretches overhead. Now we're already in a side bend, but let's take it a little deeper by cupping the backside of the head with the hand, drawing that shoulder back, and you can push through that hand that's on the floor to get that twist through your upper rib cage. You could look sharply through the corner of the eyes, or you can rest the eyes. And let's affirm here as we breathe. Waves of joy are surging upward in my spine. Now let's inhale, stretch that left arm, build yourself up to sit, and then exhale, relax it down. All right, we're going to come on down to the floor. We're not going to need the bolster yet, so it can slide away. I would have a block close by, and let's come on down. So with your knees bent, ground your feet, ankles aligned under the knees, and then tuck and lift the buttocks, like you're coming into a two-legged table or smaller bridge form. Your block is gonna slide underneath your sacrum. You're gonna lower your weight. Flip your palms open, fan them out. And let's close the eyes. And as you close the eyes, notice you are receiving some traction through the neck, but it's nothing too fierce because you'll also notice a lot of weight descending down across your upper back. Try to keep the feet hip distance apart, toes pointed straight ahead so that your knees and thighs stay parallel with each other. Notice the movement in your core. Swelling and expansion in the belly as you inhale. The softness as it deflates on the exhale. Just being here, breathing here is good for the thyroid gland. It's good for the spleen, which helps to purify our blood. It's giving us an inversion to slow down the inner workings or stirrings of the mind. But we're going to invert more than this so that we're also aiding circulation. So we're going to pick up the feet, send them skyward or waterfall. And you don't have to necessarily be active with your feet. I'm not going to instruct pointing or flexing. They can just be suspended here. Now, holding the legs up this way, you might start to feel some fatigue set in at some point. See if you can build up your stamina and endurance by staying committed to the pose. Or maybe pointing and flexing the feet to see if that helps.
And we're going to keep the right leg up. And we're slowly going to lower the left foot all the way down, but your left leg's going to be more straight this time. When your left heel lands, just relax that leg. And then as you exhale, bend your right knee. Take your hands up to hold the back of your thigh, top of the knee, if you can reach it. And if you don't want to hug it in, or if it hurts to hug it in, you can just bend the knee and let your arms remain on the floor. All right, if you are using your hands, you're gonna let the arms go. You're gonna soar the right foot back up and then use your core muscles and then left hip flexor to elevate your left leg back to waterfall. Now, as you exhale, lower your right leg. And as you exhale, you can bend your left knee. Remember, you have the option to hold that leg with your hands or you can just draw it towards you. Slowly and deeply in and out through the nose. Inhale, resend your left foot up and then lift your right leg up to join. As you exhale, separate the legs into a wide V shape. Bonasana. That'll be a deep stretch for your inner thighs, inner hips. Let's just hold it a couple more breaths. Let go of any resistance if you can. Inhale, zip the legs back together. Exhale, lower the feet. Push down through the feet to lift away from the block and roll it down one vertebra at a time. Now hook left ankle over the right knee. Maybe this feels especially good in the moment, but if it does, no need to try anything else. But if you feel compelled to lift that right foot to lace up your hands behind your right thigh, you can come into eye of the needle pose. Feel free to be just lazy with your right foot. It can flop down. Concentrate on your breath work. And breathing in a diaphragmatic way. Only if you have the handhold behind your right thigh, see if you can scoop the belly in, peel the head off the floor, lifting the nose up towards the knee. Exhale, release back down. Release your hands so the right foot lowers and then the left foot can join beside it. All right, second side, right foot elevates and stacks over the left knee. Checking in here, this may be perfect. If you want to deepen the stretch, lift the left foot, connect your hands behind. Now 
Once you strike the pose, move back into your breath. And on your next inhale, just simply breathe in. And only if you have the legs hugging in, should you pump the belly in and lift the nose towards the knee. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Gently lower yourself back down. All right, we're gonna lower the left foot to the floor and cross the right foot. But then we're going to hover the feet. So the thighs are perpendicular to the floor and knees aligned over the rim of the pelvis. You should feel a slight little uh, lift for your low back in this position. Your knees are going to roll about halfway to the floor on the left side. And you're gonna lift and lower the knees or rock them forward and back or blend of both. You can even do little circles here because I want you to massage the piriformis. And then draw the knees back to center, lean the knees off to the right, about halfway or a portion of the way. We're almost to the floor because we're all going to be different. Where do you find that tender spot? Where does it feel like it needs a little kneading, a little massage work? How can your rocking and rolling help to do that? I've told you before, you can use a tennis ball or a pinky ball up underneath, but you have to be cautious because I did it so much for so long at some point years ago and I actually bruised myself. So try to avoid that. Let's bring the knees back up through center. This time roll them over to the left side to land the feet for a spinal twist. See if you can drop the right shoulder. The head can stay neutral or you can turn it one way or another. And then close your eyes, relax and breathe here. Turn your head to center if it's not already. Lift the knees and cross them over to the right. Lower the feet. See if you can lower the left shoulder. Find a good position for your head and your neck. Close your eyes. And be here. Affirming new life, new consciousness is flowing through my being. Now, instead of rolling the knees through center, we're actually going to take the left arm and lift it up so that we can roll to the right side, push down to the hands to climb up. Now, we are going to be on hands and knees. So if you're needing a blanket, remember you can stack it underneath for a little extra padding and support. 
Line up wrists below the shoulders. Push down through your shins, ankles, and hands. And now extend your right leg back behind you, but try to keep that leg at hip height. So if you can see yourself in your frame, make sure the heel is in line with your hip. Elongate your neck, but look down just past your fingertips. Keep that back foot flexed so the toes are pointed downward. And now see if you can stabilize and elevate your left arm forward and out, see bird pose. Well, as you exhale, lower the left hand, lift your head up, your right foot higher, so that way you're back bending. And then exhale, nose toward the knee. Inhale, extend the right leg, look out. Exhale, catch stretch. Inhale, cow tilt, but with the right leg extended. And then exhale with the knee curling in. Last one. A little spinal work, a little core work. Lower the right knee. All right, second side. Left leg's going to shoot back. Ankle is flexed. If you have a mirror, you can gauge from your uh, computer frame. Check out your alignment. And then recenter your head. Set your gaze. And then we'll take it into the flow. Head up. Your toes kind of point back as you lift the back leg. And as you exhale, contract your core and curl in. Continue that flow of movement. Try not to get reckless with your movement. Sometimes we get mindless and then we do something um, that the body doesn't like. Come back down to tabletop. Set your hands a little bit more forward than they were. Curl your toes and lift up and back to downward facing dog. Now from Adho Mukha Svanasana, walk it out. Bending one knee. Straightening the other. Every time I instruct this, I always see inevitably a couple students like pedaling really fast and that does nothing. <laughs> you want to pause and really focus on the straight leg and send that heel towards the floor. But really feel it before you swap sides. And then walk and travel your hands back towards your feet. Land them down. And you can be an Uttanasana with your legs more active and structured, or you can be more Yin, which is a bit, little bit more loose and whimsical. Pick the pose. Being firm internally. Nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. And consider for a moment, oftentimes it's our own self holding us back. It's our own inner demons holding us back. It's our own weaknesses or lack of awareness that can hold us back. And as you're hinging from your hips and folding yourself in half, see if you can gravitate a little bit lower and lower and lower. Wow. Let's walk the hands back out in front of us to softly land back to the knees. And this is where we're gonna use this blanket. And if it's all folded up like mine is, you want it to look more like this. 
And then we're going to loosely roll it. Smooth it out as you're rolling it though, because this is going to land underneath our backs. And the smoother it is, the more comfortable it is. This is going to go across the mat. And we're also going to use the bolster to slip under our knees. The blanket is going to go at our mid or upper back behind the heart so that our shoulders, head and neck cross over the other side. The arms can be out like a T. And then, of course, if you find that it's, if it's too much for your head and your neck, you can add in a toss pillow or a second blanket below. So this is one way to do what's called the bubbling brook pose. Sometimes it's even nice to have a rolled up towel underneath the neck. Some people even like a rolled up towel underneath the ankles. Just notice as you close the lids of the eyes, the contour of your body, the waves that you're creating. And turn back within and surf the wave of your breath. This is going to be our first real restorative pose today. So we're going to hold this a bit longer.
here when we take restoration, we want to still remain focused on one thing, one object. Be the object of your focus is your breath. Maybe it's a symbol or a vision, mantra or an affirmation. Whatever you choose, stay with it. Slowly start to turn the body over to the right. And the same blanket, we're going to turn the opposite way. And now it's going to be like a pranayama bolster underneath the spine. This bolster can stay where it's at. The only thing you'll have to be mindful of is where the tail end of that blanket lands on your body, similar to a bolster. Do you want it coming all the way to the low end or do you want it to land more under your ribs? So check that out. Line it up so it's going underneath your head and so that your shoulders can kind of fall away. really are two different types of back bends. Both helping to open up the cavity of the chest right at the middle. In this one, I angle my arms more in the A-frame style. But you can also have them out like a T.
under the blankets, acting like a pranayama bolster. Should be helpful in opening the breath. Even though that may not be your meditation or what you're focusing on specifically. We're going to change up something here. I want you to stand your left foot on top of the bolster. And once you do that, spin to the outer edge of the foot so that leg is taking half the butterfly. And hopefully your knee is propped or being helped or supported by the bolster as well. If that's too much, you can leave it out. Let's lift the left knee, slide the leg out, and then bend the right knee, stacking the foot on top and opening the hip on this side. Three deep breaths. Let's 
slide your left foot back, roll over to your right side. And once you roll over to your right side, we're going to create a slide. So you can do it the way we typically do, tall, medium. You could also do it lower, medium, smaller, okay? I'm gonna go medium, smaller, because I'm gonna try something different. Uh, so basically, we're gonna elevate the legs and the feet. Um, so you can have the legs lifted and roll down to your back. But we've got this blanket. Maybe you need it as a neck roll, you know? Maybe that would be good. Perhaps you want to unroll it and cover. And what I was thinking about doing is folding it this way. And you know how sometimes we wrap the legs up when the bolster is flat to the floor? I thought I would try wrapping the legs with the blanket with them elevated. Because sometimes we use a strap to hold the legs together. So I'm going to do it this way today. You can, again, experiential practice. <laughs> so you can experiment, you know, kind of blending some styles together. Or maybe you have um, a certain one that you preference. And if I'm putting you in a pose and once you get in it, you're like, eh, kind of want something else. Listen to your intuition, listen to your own self and create the pose of your choice. I'm gonna place my hands on the belly here. This can be a grounding feeling. And also tune you into your breath. And also tune you in to notice if you carry around tension in your core. Right now we want the belly to be soft so it can bellow as we breathe. Feel free to use a towel or an eye pillow to cover or shield your eyes. It can be really helpful when we're practicing during the daytime.
firm mentally within. Bones, muscles, movement. I surrender now. Anxiety, elation, depression, any and all turning thoughts. I now give over to the hands of peace. Peace, be still. Be still. No, I am.
gently turn your head to the right shoulder. And then gently roll the head over to the left shoulder. And do that a couple more times. Nice massage for the scalp. Once you turn back to center, go ahead and unruffle the legs from the blanket if you used it for that purpose and draw the knees in. You can be static and still, or you can sway from side to side. Eventually landing over to one. Acclimate there as long as you need to before you come up. You can return to your platform to sit on. Sit up nice and tall. Let's join the hands together to Anjali Mudra. Oh, 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 oh. We all walk away from this practice feeling more at home and at peace in our bodies, hearts, and minds. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.